We're not there yet, but experiments have given tantalizing hints. For example, neurosurgeons during certain brain surgeries, for epilepsy say, sometimes stimulate parts of a patient's brain while the patient is awake. The brain itself has no pain receptors. Patients have reported vivid experiences from these stimulations, seeing flashes of light, hearing imaginary sounds, feeling like they're falling, even recalling memories or emotions suddenly. The famous neuroscientist Wilder Penfield in the mid-20th century elicited all sorts of responses by zapping different cortical areas. In some cases, patients hallucinated complex scenes or sensations out of thin air. Penfield's work essentially showed that you can trigger the brain's own movies or sensations with a bit of electrical prodding. This is a primitive form of writing to the brain. It's not subtle or controlled enough to simulate reality, but it validates the basic premise. The brain will perceive things that aren't really there if you feed the right signals. On the flip side, we have research where brain activity is read and interpreted. We already mentioned brain gate for motor output. Taking it further, Scientists have used brain scans and machine learning to reconstruct images or videos a person is seeing or even imagining, with spooky albeit blurry accuracy. And in a simpler form, something like an EEG can tell if you're asleep, dreaming, alert, etc. just by reading your brain waves. So reading from the brain is doable to an extent, and writing to it is doable in simple ways. All this is to say, connecting a living brain to a computer to provide it an interface to the world is not science fiction anymore. It's a science project in progress. Now, a full Full brain in VAT setup where the brain thinks it has a body and is moving around in a rich world would require an incredibly advanced interface far beyond what we have. But the trajectory is there. We're essentially working on components of that right now under the labels of VR, neuroprosthetics, BCIs, etc. In fact, some experiments have basically put brains in robots. Cue the pinky and the brain theme. At the University of Reading in 2008, scientists grew a network of about 300,000 rat neurons in a dish, effectively a simple brain on a microelectrode array, and connected it to a small robot. They dubbed this robot Gordon. The neurons received signals from the robot's sensors like sonar for distance, and in turn their firing drove the wheels of the robot. Incredibly, this blob of brain cells in a vat of nutrients learned to make the robot move around and avoid obstacles. The neurons and machine formed a feedback loop. The robot provided sensory info, the neurons processed it and output an action, the robot responded, and so on. It's a primitive example of an embodied artificial brain, and it's literally a brain in a vat controlling a body albeit a tiny rudimentary brain and a tiny wheeled robot body. Researchers observed that over time the neuron cluster adapted. It appeared to learn from its environment, adjusting the robot's behavior. Think about what that means. Those neurons had no body of their own, no eyes or ears, just electrode interfaces. Yet they acted as a brain for a robot, as if the robot was its body. This hints that brains, or brain tissue, can potentially function and learn when given artificial inputs and outputs, not just the biological ones they evolved with.